folks, me again. Meet me over here at the Remaining to Learn sign. I'm gone again, like that's hard to guess. And it's time for us to start a new chapter, which really makes me sad because this is where we set deeply the little pieces of information that you need to really understand the big stuff that we get to in each chapter and to understand the big stuff that we get to at the end of the course. For now, this will just have to do. Today, we're starting parallel and perpendicular lines, but today, you and I aren't going to have anything to do with parallel and perpendicular lines, just lines. Lines and angles, the angles that are created by those lines. Watch. Now, of course, the world's absolutely chock full of lines. Lines are everywhere, and all a line is is a description of the space between or along two points. If we're lucky enough, we've got a line to work with. If not, we'll use our geometry books for the first time and make one. If we're even luckier, we've got a pair of lines. Now, later, we're going to care about whether those lines are parallel or not parallel or perpendicular or something special, but for the moment, they're just a pair of lines that are laying there on the floor, or in your case, up on the screen. Now what we can do with those lines is we can draw a line across them. That makes a special kind of line called a transversal, so-called because it transverses or crosses the other two lines. Now among other things, what that transversal gets us is angles, a whole bunch of angles actually. One created everywhere that a transversal crosses one of the original lines. That makes a total of eight. And what's special to us is how we pair up those angles so that we can reference them in an intelligent way. So let me show you a different example. Here's another pair of lines, nothing special about them, until I put a transversal across them. Now we create a whole bunch of angles again, like I said before. And what matters to us is the angle pairs. I can identify an angle quite easily. Here's one in the upper right. There's another angle on the bottom line just like it. It's the one on the upper right on the bottom line. We call this pair of angles corresponding angles because they're the two angles that match each other top and bottom. And what's neat is there are corresponding angles all the way around both sets of lines. There's a corresponding angle pair on the bottom right. There's a corresponding angle pair on the top left. There's a corresponding angle pair on the bottom left. Whatever it takes to see the top angle and the bottom angle that match, that fit on the same upper, lower, left, right, side of the transversal in the lines. Those are the corresponding angles. Another pair of angles we create is alternate interior angles. See, we say alternate to mean that one of them's on one side of the transversal, one of them's on the other. Alternate interiors would be interior to the two lines and alternate to the transversal. And there's two pairs of alternate interiors, one on the upper left, lower right, one on the lower left, upper right. Those are the alternate interior angles. The next kind of angles we work with are the alternate exterior angles. Again, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, but now they're outside the two lines, not inside. That makes them alternate exterior. And of course, there's two pairs there as well. Upper right, lower left. Upper left, lower right. Both sets are alternate exterior angles, and they pair up together. Finally, we have an unusual set of angles. They're not on opposite sides of the transversal. They're both on the same side of the transversal and inside the lines. We call that consecutive, specifically consecutive interior angles. And consecutive interior angles, just like the others, have two sets, one on the right side, one on the left side. Inside the two lines, on the same side of the transversal, consecutive interior angles. Now this is an important thing I want to get across to you. It doesn't matter what direction the transversal is going. It could be going a little bit up to the right. It could be going straight up and down. It could be going curved over to the left. It could be going curved way over to the left. None of that matters. All that matters is that the transversal is crossing the two lines. And that creates pairs of angles. Here I'll show you the alternate interior angles, one of the sets again. Why does this matter? So what? You're making that stuff up. When are we ever going to use this? Look, I've said it dozens of times before. You and I need a common language. When we're speaking the same language, it makes it so we can reference stuff smartly. It's why we each have names. It's why we say left is left and right is right. 
although for you, left is that way and right's that way for me. In any case, the point is we come up with pairs of angles inside these lines along a transversal so that we can reference the parts that matter later. It will become important later, I promise you. For now, it's important that if I say alternate interior angles, you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. So today, you're going to practice the concept of identifying and creating those angles in your pairs, in your groups, in your uh, table groups. I want you to take one of these big pieces of paper, your sub will make sure you get it, and I want you to split these big pieces of paper off into four sections. That's easy enough to do with lines, right? Hey. Okay. Then I want you to create pairs of lines inside each of those sections. In any case, we learned four different pairs of angles that you can create with lines and transversals. So I guess what we're going to need at this point is some transversals. Again, doesn't matter which direction they go. I want you to label each one of these sections with one of those four kinds. Corresponding. Alternate interior. I'm going to change colors now. Alternate exterior and consecutive interior. Then I want you to show me what those are. Pick out one pair of each and identify them clearly. Up here on the top one, the corresponding angles are the ones that make the same angle, the same side, the same corner on each of the two lines. So if I picked this angle, Its corresponding angle is the one on the upper left on the bottom line, right here. Alternate interior? Well, it's interior to the two lines, and it's on alternate sides of the transversal. So if I started with this one, the alternate interior angle is on the alternate side interior to the two blue lines. Alternate exterior, alternate to the transversal, exterior to the two lines. So if I started with this one on this side, somebody quick point to the alternate exterior angle on this one. Down here. And consecutive interior, well, interior, of course, tells us that we're inside the two lines, and consecutive tells us we're on the same side. So if one of them is this one, the other one is this one. I'd like you to noodle for just a minute, too, after you put it together, after you're looking at your fabulous creation about what it is that might be special about those pairs of angles in each set. Don't forget to sign your creation. I want to make sure you get your proper credit. Now, make them pretty, because I know how important attention to detail is to everybody. Once you're done with these big posters, go ahead and give them to your substitute, and he'll trade out, he or she will trade out for you with today's worksheet. What can I say? It's a math class. And a math class without worksheets would be like a pair of lines in a transversal without a pair of alternate interior angles. When uh, we get together again next week, hopefully we'll be able to explain what it is about these pairs of angles that's so important and what geometrically we can do with them that's important.